Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Breed Complex, home of Babe Ruth baseball and softball, more explicitly the Grace Regato softball field for the 22nd John Hall and Memorial Championship Final. St. Mary's Catholic Central League taking on Swampscott Northeastern Conference. By way of the flip of the coin, Swampscott is the home team. Haley Hopkins will be on the mound for the Big Blue. And for the Lady Spartans, it'll be Christina Nowicki pitching and leading off. The center fielder, Marina DiBiasso. The center fielder bats second. Playing first and batting third, Talia Smaller. Catching and batting fourth, Jordan Sullivan had a big game last night against Link Classical. Jenny Udis, the third baseman, hits number five. Playing short, Sam Porozinski will hit sixth. The right fielder, Alyssa Grossi, uh, Grossi, will hit number seven. The young eighth grader, and this is a very young St. Mary's team. They got eight freshmen and an eighth grader, and the eighth grader, Lily Newhall, who often pitches. She's playing second base. And I've got to check because I have the lineup card that Paige Licata gave me. Starting in left field and batting ninth, Katie O'Neill. But they, but they named somebody else when they listed that had the teams line up before the game and had the anthem. They listed somebody else. So I'll have to wait and see who's playing left field if, if they made a, a late change and, and didn't give it to us. So they have just the opposite records. St. Mary's is 11 and six. Swamp Squad is six and 11. So Christine and the Wiki will look to get it started for the Lady Spartans. She's on the mound today. Pepe last night struck out 15 classical Rams. And pitched an outstanding game. And she gets hit on the leg. So one up, one on. Marina DiBiasso. Very good hockey player. Nowicki takes off, and they throw her out. Nice tag by the shortstop, Watts. Nice throw by the catcher, Frazier, and they throw Nowicki out. So the base runner was wiped out. He'd be also the center fielder would be the hitter back in the box. In for a strike. Way up and away for a ball. Low for a ball. It in the right center field in the gap to the fence. So that throw out at second base was huge. TBSO gets a double. St. Mary's would have a lead now if, they did, if Nowicki wasn't thrown out at second base. Not her fault, it was a perfect play. But that's a big play now. Talia Smaller, the first baseman, will be the hitter. Hit hard off the third baseman. Staying with it, Chloe 
Rakoskis. Small hit it hard, but hit right at the third baseman. She knocked it down and made the play. So two outs. Jordan Sullivan had a big game last night with the bat. And she's on a nice job behind the plate, too. High for a ball. So Smaller, excuse me, DiBiaso at second. Couldn't go anywhere. The ball's hit right to the third baseman. Down and in, off the catcher. Safe at third base. So it's a pass ball. Frazier had it, blocked it, dropped it, couldn't pick it up. Hit way up in the air to center field. Cresta makes the play. So they hit batter thrown out at second was a huge play because it was followed by a double. The double is left at second base. St. Mary's is down in the first. Swampskirt will bat in the bottom of the first. It'll be Sidney Crest of the center fielder leading off. Mia Hopkins at the right field to bat second. Batting third and playing shortstop, Katie Watts. The third baseman, Chloe Rakoskis, will bat in the cleanup spot. Riley Lord will play second and bat fifth. The pitcher, Kaylee Hopkins, will bat sixth. Batting seventh and playing first base, Sarah Ryan. Catching and batting eighth, Nicolette Frazier. And in the ninth spot is Margot Beaupre, the left fielder. And in this game, neither team is using a designated player. So St. Mary's will be, they've got a couple of games. They're going to they bail out a little bit because we talked about in the first game, Classical is going to have to wait over a week before they play again in the state tournament. St. Mary's have got two more home games. They play here Tuesday and they play here on Friday. So that means they'll only have uh, the weekend before they start state tournament action. And this is going to be the first time in a long time, I believe, unless something happens with the pairings, that all of the teams qualifying for the state tournament here in the city will be on the road. St. Mary's boys, tech boys, classical boys, classical girls, St. Mary's girls. Unless there's an overabundance of teams in the divisions, they're probably all going to be away from home. So Sydney Cresta will face Christina Nowicki on the mound. In for a strike. Christina Nowicki. She'd rather be in the outfield, I believe. She's not crazy about being on the mound, but she does it well. Following in her foot, sister's footsteps, Mia Nowicki was lights out for a couple of years. Now she's at Assumption, she's lights out there. Up and away for a ball. She usually comes in relief. Pepe usually starts. Nowicki is a sophomore. So they got Nowicki, they got Pepe who's a freshman, they got Newhall who's an eighth grader. So Paige Licata is blessed with some pitching, which is a major, major part of the sport. Hit foul back out of play. Gas stays even at two. Actually, board says three and two. I must have missed the pitch. I thought it was two and two. 
in on the fish. She follows it back. Right into the bust behind the St. Mary's dugout that brought Swampsky here to the game. High for ball four. So both teams put their leadoff hitter on. Neil Hopkins, the right fielder, will be the hitter. In for a strike. This is the first time I've seen these uniforms for St. Mary's. Throw goes into center field as Cresta steals second. So Swampsky has a runner in scoring position with nobody out here in the first. Up and away for a ball. One and two the count. Hit foul off the backstop. Wow, that didn't miss by much. That's a tough pitch to take with two strikes. Hit the second base. Knocked down, can't make the play. Hopkins will reach on the arrow. So first and third for Swampscott with nobody out. Katie Watts, the shortstop, will be the hitter. High for a ball, they let the runner go to second. So second and third with nobody out. Down and away for a ball. In for a strike. Comes back to even the count. She was down two and oh, she evens it up at two and two. High for a ball. Pops it up right behind third base for a base hit. And she hustles in the second, turns it into a double. Just a little punch, a little Texas League bloop. And Swanska jumps on top. Hopkins only got as far as third because she waited to see if the ball would be caught. Just landed fair. So still nobody out, second and third. Chloe Rakoskis, the third baseman, is the hitter. Number two, Chloe Rakoskis. In for a strike. High for a ball. A walk, an error, and now a little bloop double behind third base. 
reaches for it, hits it right at the right fielder. Enough to bring the run home. So everybody moves up. Hopkins comes in to score. Watts moves over to third. Riley Lord, the second baseman. Looking to put it in play and bring another run home. Safe at first. Great play by Porozinski, who went way to her right and backhanded that, kept her from going in the outfield. But Lord gets an infield hit, an RBI. And the first three hitters for Swamps could have scored. Kaylee Hopkins, the pitcher. Is the hitter. So Swamsky jumping out. In for a strike. A walk and an error started the inning, but a double, a sacrifice fly, and another base hit. Down the way for a ball. This is a team you're going to see for St. Mary's for a couple of years. They don't have a senior on their team. Bounces off the catcher. Nobody going anywhere. Hit in the right center field for a base hit. The beat goes on for the big blue. Sarah Ryan, the first baseman, will be the hitter. It goes to the backstop. They'll move up. Second and third. Swamsky trying to put a lot of distance between them and the Lady Spartans right off the bat. High and tight for a ball. Ryan is the seventh hitter in the inning. And the only out has been a sacrifice fly, knocking in a run. Missing again. 3-0 the count. On four pitches. The walk loads the bases. Nicolette Fraser, the catcher, is the hitter. High again for a ball. Christine Nowicki trying to find a rhythm out there on the mound. In for a strike. Nice stop by Sullivan, the catcher on a pitch in the dirt. In for a strike. Count evens at two. Hit foul at home plate. And we'll do it again at two and two. High for a ball. 
Big pitch coming up now. Payoff pitch three and two, the base is loaded. Wide for a ball. Brings Paige Lacotter out to the mound. Three walks in the inning, two of them back to back here. This one forces in a run. Mago Bopre will be the hitter. In for a strike. They nice stopped by Sullivan, the catcher. One ball, one strike. Sidney Cresta, who started this uprising, is on deck. In for a strike. Strike three call, good pitch. Two outs now with the bases loaded. Cresta drew a walk, leading off this inning and scored the first of the four runs they have. Hits it high in the air, foul. She chased that was way up and in. And she fouled it off over the St. Mary's dugout. Another nice stop by Sullivan. Way up. And it's two and one. In for a strike. And we got deuces wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Here in a big inning for Swamps get starting off this hall and final. Hit out of play. In the air, long run, foul ball. Newhall went long way from second. Grassi a long run, for the right fielder. Couldn't quite get there. So we'll do it again at two and two. Off the catcher, that's going to score a run. That takes off the force. They would have had a force anywhere, even at the plate. Now, ground ball, they have to go to first. The count is three and two. Hit foul towards third base. So Cresta hanging tough here. <laughs> Fouled off again. Hit 
Foul, hit it hard, pulled it foul. And that, I was waiting, that's ball four. In for a strike. Slicing it foul, past first base. High for a ball. Hopkins reached on an error and scored a run. She's up for the second time in the inning. That one bounced in. And the count is full again. And that's ball four. Katie Watts hit a little blooper over the third baseman's head, dropped in, wound up being a double. High again for a ball. Four straight walks given up by Nowicki. Five in the inning. In for a strike. Hit in the air, it's gonna drop. And he threw the ball home for some reason and, and scooting over to second is Watts. Koskis hit a sacrifice fly. Pops up to the third baseman. They finally get out of the inning. Thirteen hitters come to the plate for Swampscott. Eight score. And Swampscott has jumped out to a substantial eight to nothing lead over St. Mary's at the end of one inning. Jenny Udis. Sam Porozinski and Alyssa Grossi will be the hitters as the Spartans start the second inning and they need a bundle. And I believe it's starting to rain.
The rain was supposed to hold off until tonight. Hopefully it will. Three and oh. She goes after the pitch. It was three and oh, and she hit it. She didn't take a pitch. They throw her out. I don't know if we have any Mickey Mantles or Ted Williams. Three and oh pitch, swinging it away. Hit right back to the mound. Two up, two down very quickly. Alyssa Grossi, the right fielder. Oh, Alyssa Grossi, I keep saying it. Both ways, I'm trying to get it right. Hit into right field for a base hit. So a two out hit, and my score sheet is trying to, starting to get wet. Lily Newhall, this is the eighth grader who pitches some. But she's not pitching, plays second base. Up and away for a ball. Niece of the AD, Jeff Newhall. Nice stop by the catcher, Fraser. In for a strike. <laughs> Up and away for a ball. And that's ball four. So a walk following a single extends the inning. So this is the flying ointment that Paige Licata gave me. This is Felicia D'Alessandro. The lineup card she gave me said Katie O'Neill. Caught by the shortstop. Nice play by Katie Watts. So they're hitting the walk go by the boards. St. Mary's is down in the second. Foskett holding on to the eight nothing lead. They're looking for their sixth tournament win. See, Mary's looking for their 12th, but they're going to have to work a lot harder if they're going to get it today, the way Swamps get started. 13 hitters in the first inning. Now 
Christina Nowicki goes to center field. Lily Newhall is the new pitcher. And I believe DiBiasso is going to go to right field and D'Alessandro will, will go to our left field and D'Alessandro will go to right field. And they better hurry up if they want to get this one in because it's starting to rain. So DiBiasso will go to left field. D'Alessandro will go to right field. Nowicki goes to center field. Newhall will take the mound. And the right fielder, Grossi, goes to second base. It'll be Riley Lord, the second baseman, leading off for Swampscott. She singled in a run and scored a run in that big first inning. Low for a ball. So the young eighth grader pressed into service. Riley Lord, Kaylee Hopkins, Sarah Ryan. The three hitters for Swampscott here. And that one bounced off the catcher. In for a strike. We had a first in this tournament, Kara Crowley, the coach of English, and Jane Gary, the assistant coach for Link Classical in that last game. They both swing and a miss as Newhall starts with a strikeout. They both are former players who played in the tournament. They both come back to coach in the tournament. And they were both scholarship winners in the past. As the rain starts to come down. Haley Hopkins singled and scored. Hits it foul to the backstop. I don't know if we're going to get five innings in in this game. That one bounces. Line to right field, over the right field is head. Back to the fence, that's going to be three. In with a stand-up triple. Kaylee Hopkins, she hit that, a shot. D'Alessandro took two steps toward home plate to go get it and realized it's over my head. That's the hottest play for an outfield to make, the line drive right at you. And that was that exactly what that was. That was hit right at her. If she never moved, she'd have been perfect position to make the play. When she took two or three steps towards home plate, it was just over her head. Swing and a miss. Sarah Ryan walked and scored.
Low for a ball. We mentioned St. Mary's has dominated the tournament, but they've won half. A little more than half, because this is the 22nd. Hit the second base. Bobbled it, but stayed with it. But Ryan will get an RBI. The pitcher, Kaylee Hopkins, scored her second run. Nicolet Frazier walked, forcing in a run, and scored a run in that first inning. Five walks given up in the first inning. Four hits in an error. Fishing down and in. Hit the second base. Two plays by Alyssa Grossi. But the triple. It and the infield out gives Swanska another run. They padded their lead. I don't think they thought it would be this easy. They mercy ruled English in the opening round. Now they've grabbed a quick 9-0 lead over St. Mary's at the end of two. Top of the order for St. Mary's as we start the third inning. Christina Nowicki get hit by a pitch and she was promptly thrown out trying to steal second base. And she rips it in the center field for a base hit. On for the second time. Marina DiBiasso doubled and got stranded at third. In for a strike. Up and away for a ball. One one the count. She was the center fielder, she's now the left fielder. When they made the pitching change. Low for a ball. She had a big game in, in the last night against Glasgow. She got a big hit that broke a 2-2 tie and then scored a run in the same inning. In for a strike. Hits it foul out of play. Protects the plate, reaches and hits it foul toward the Swamsky dugout. A few brave fans sitting out in this horrible weather. It is cold. Lined in a right field for a base hit. That's going to score a run. 
On our way to third, DiBiasso has got a triple. Oh, she's got a triple and a double. Talia Small, Smaller, the third baseman, or the first baseman, is the hitter inside for a ball. And the rain is starting to come down, maybe a little bit hotter. In for a strike, one on one. Up and in for a ball. It's been miserable. The wind is blowing, it's ice cold, it's overcast. This is the weather we had the first month. Ripped in a right center field for a base hit. Another extra base hit. And Smaller glides into second base. Single, triple, double. If Sullivan hits the ball over the fence, the first four hitters will hit for the cycle. She flied the center field her one trip. Up and away for a ball. Hit high in the air to center field. Cresta makes the play. Second time Sullivan is going to Cresta. Jenny Udis, the third baseman, is grounded out second or first. In for a strike. That one bounced in the home plate. Hopkins is young. She's only a sophomore. And they're young Swaska too, they only have three seniors. Push down at first base line. Hopkins will make the play. Almost like a swinging bunt. Smaller moves over to third. Swanson has six eighth graders on their team. Hit the shot. Nice play by Watts. The Mears would have loved to get that third run in. They get two in the top of the third. They had three straight hits, a single, a triple, a double. And then Hopkins gets the next three. And we're moving to the bottom half of the third where it's now nine to two. Swamp Scott. I'm looking at their roster. Margo Beaupre, Mia Hopkins, and Riley Lord are the only seniors. Six eighth graders. 
and a couple of sophomores. Chloe Rokoskis is only an eighth grader. Nicolette Frazier, the catcher, one of those important parts of the defense, is an eighth grader. So Gary Mor Moran has got a lot of young kids, as does Paige Licata. The difference is Paige Licata doesn't have any seniors. Margot Beaupre was called on strikes for one trip. Tries to butt, fouls it off. Margot Beaupre is one of the seniors on this team. Takes it for a strike. Lily Newhall starting her second inning of work. She's given up a run. She came in and pitched the second inning. Swing and a miss for strike three. Newhall starts both her innings with a strikeout. Sydney Crester has walked twice and scored twice. And that was both in the first inning when Swamps could send 13 hitters to the plate. Low for a ball. Line right to the second baseman. Grassi makes the play. They get Crested for the first time. Mia Hopkins reached an error, walked, scored a run, all in the first fit inning. In for a strike. The rain is just enough to be a pain in the neck to go along with the horrible cold weather. Up and away for a ball. Swing and a miss. One, two, the count. Trying to change up, started high and stayed high. And we got deuces wild, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Wide for a ball. Strike three call, good pitch. Gets two strikeouts the inning, her second and third. She's retired five in a row. First one, two, three inning for either team. And we'll move into the top of the fourth. It's 
Swampski holding a comfortable lead. Getting eight runs in the first inning, 13 hitters. They only got four hits, but they got five walks in an error. And that certainly helped them get around the bases very quickly. And my score sheet is getting ruined with the water flowing all over it. This is not like being at the press box at Fraser Field. This is out in the elements. This is the kind of weather that these teams had to put up with beginning of the season. It started a week late with the snow and the rain and the wind and the cold and the lousy weather. Teams couldn't get outside. There were teams that first time to get out on the field was the first game of the season. And it was just like this, ice cold, people putting on blankets and extra gear and gloves. Alyssa Grassi singles at one trip. Hits it to third, one pitch, one out. Rokoskis, the eighth grader over at third base. Lily Newhall drew a walk. She's now the pitcher of record, coming in relief. In first strike. Swing and a miss. Waves at the pitch, it was down and gets tagged out. That's the first strikeout for Kaylee Hopkins. Felicia D'Alessandro hit a little like half pop, half line drive to the shortstop. Hits it up in the air. Rokoskis makes her second play in the inning. A quick one, two, three inning for Hopkins and the Big Blue. So through Hopkins, four innings of work. She's held St. Mary's at bay. They got five hits, three of them came back to back to back to get the two runs. She hit a batter that was thrown out trying to steal. It'll be three, four, and five for Swamps getting the bottom of the fourth. Katie Watts, Chloe Rakoskis, Riley Lord. Some of the people got their umbrellas out. More competition in the back with the two dogs trying to go at each other. Katie Watts doubled in a run and scored and singled. And that was all in the first inning. So she's two for two in RBI and a base hit. Again, all in the first inning. <coughs> Louie 
Newhall starting her third inning of work. She retired six of seven, five in a row, but she did give up a triple and an infield ground ball. Nice job by Sullivan getting out quickly and throwing Watts out. Lori Rokoskis, the young eighth grader. Here to sacrifice fly, knock in a run, and pop to third for the final out, batting twice in that first inning. Hit to first base. Small will make the play unassisted. Two Kirk outs in the fourth. Riley Lord. Singled and scored and knocked in a run in the first. And she was the first hitter that Lily Newhall faced, and Newhall struck her out. Pitch in for a strike. Up and away for a ball. Hit the second. Rossi makes the play. Another one, two, three inning. Second in a row for Newhall. Eight in a row. She's retired. But we finished four. And it's Swapskit on the top part of the score sheet. Nine to two over St. Mary's. The fifth inning. She got hit by a pitch, got a base hit, and scored one of the two runs. That was the inning when St. Mary's got three consecutive hits. Down and in for a ball. That one bounced in. Three straight out of the strike zone. In for a strike. Hit in a right field for a base hit. Nowicki's got another hit. She's on for the third time. Marini DiBiasso has doubled and tripled. She scored a run and knocked in a run. She's been involved in both runs. We told her she's a pretty good hockey player too. In case you're wondering, she's not related to the Everett, a former Everett football coach. <laughs> Off the catcher, it bounces into the dugout area. And Wiki moves up on the wild pitch. This kind of takes away Paige Licata, what she could possibly do, like sacrificing people trying to pick up a run or steal a base. Because you don't need one or two runs, you need seven. Down and in, that'll move the runner to third. The 
young sophomore out of rhythm a little bit on the mound starting this fifth inning. Hit for another big hit. She's got a single, a double, and a triple. Talia Smaller, ground to the third, doubled in a run in, in the third. These top three hitters went back to back to back with a single, double, triple, knocking in the two runs. Small will try to keep it going. They've got a single and a single. DiBiasa knocking in her second run. She's involved, been involved in all three. Off the catcher, that'll move her down to second base. The wild pitch in the dirt. In for a strike. Two one the count. Down and away. And that's ball four. So the top three reach again for the second time in the ball game. And that brings the trip out to the mound. One swing of the bat by Jordan Sullivan could shrink this game. Get St. Mary's right back in it. Solomon has flied the center field twice. She's hit hard, but she's got under it just enough to keep it in the air for the center fielder, Sidney Cresta. In for a strike. Two on, nobody out, a run in for St. Mary's, but they need a bundle. Hit in the air again, long run. Off the left fielder's glove. The error is going to allow Jordan to reach. And loads the bases for the Lady Spartans. Jenny Udis has bounced to second and bounced to the mound. And we're going to get a runner at first for Sullivan. Elijah Brown will run at first. Hit off the pitcher's glove. They make the play at first, but a run scores. One to four to three for the out. Sam Porozinski 
Bounce to the pitcher, bounce to short. Second and third, they'd love to get these two runs in. High for a ball. Nice stop by the catcher, Fraser. She's only an eighth grader. It's amazing. I'm trying to figure out, Swanson must get some kind of a waiver or... Because I know St. Mary's can have eighth graders because they're all under one principle. I didn't, I thought... There were different principles at Swampscott, so I don't know how that works, how, you, how they can be incorporated in, into the varsity program. And that's ball four. So the bases are loaded again for Alyssa Grassi, who singled and bounced to third. Swampscott dug out, I mean, excuse me, St. Mary's dugout has really come on strong. Hit slowly to third. They throw it in the dirt. The run scores. Grassi will reach on the error. The bases are still loaded. And now it's nine to five. So that so the tying runs actually at home plate. Billy Newhall can help herself here. As we get a confab on the mound. So a single, a single, a walk, an error, a ground out, a walk and an error. Two walks, two errors. Two hits. We know how it's walked and struck out. Swing and a miss. Started to pull the trigger and held up. The ball was in the dirt. One ball, one strike. This is a big opportunity for the Spartans to get back in the game. Up and away for a ball, two and one. In for a strike. Two two the count. Board says two and one, but it's two and two. Down and in. So a very pit big pitch coming up for both teams. Swing and a miss, she gets her. That's a big out. Felicia D'Alessandro hit a soft pop half line drive to the shortstop and popped up to the third baseman. In for a strike. Well, it's going to be tough because they had the bases loaded and one out with three runs in. Popped up. 
First baseman Ryan makes the play. So they send nine to the plate, but they could have taken much more of an advantage. They put three on the board. They did it with two base hits, two walks, and two swamps get errors. So we'll move into the bottom of the fifth. St. Mary's gets a little bit closer, but they had a golden opportunity to get right back in the game. They trail it nine to five. Swamsko will have six, seven, eight. Kaylee Hopkins, the pitcher. Sarah Ryan and Nicolette Fraser. And that wind really picks up and blows hard. So Newhall would like to shut him down here and have St. Mary's try and get back at it. They'll have the top of the order up again. Top of the order will lead off the sixth. It'll be the fourth time in the ball game that they've let off. And they've done the damage, or started the damage. Kaylee Hopkins singled and scored in the first, tripled and scored in the second. She's two for two. Swing and a miss. She got the triple off Newhall. The only base runner that Newhall has allowed. High for a ball. She's retired eight in a row, nine out of 10. But she's given up a hit and a run. Up and away for a ball. Another strikeout. Three over four innings. She started with a swinging strikeout. Number four, Sarah Ryan. Sarah Ryan walked and scored in the first. Bounced out second to first in the second, but it got her an RBI because she followed the triple by Hopkins and knocked her in. Hit the second. Grossi makes the play. Two up, two down in the fifth. Nicola Frazier, the catcher, who's an eighth grader, walked, got an IBI because it came with the bases loaded, and scored in the first. Grounded out second to first against Newhall, her one trip. Lines at the right field for a base hit. Newhall had retired 10 in a row before that base hit. Margot Beaupre struck out and struck out. She struck out against Nowicki and she struck out swinging against Newhall. That one goes to the backstop. Nice stop by Sullivan. Okay. 
Hit the shot. Nice play by Porozinski over to Smaller. So the hit doesn't hurt. Newhall's done a nice job keeping Swampskin off the board and giving her team a chance to make a comeback. But we're getting late. We're going into the sixth inning. It's now nine to five. St. Mary's will have the top of the order up in the sixth, but it's nine to five at Riley the end of Lord five. will move from second base to the mound. The right fielder, Mia Hopkins, will play second base. And coming in the ball game as a replacement is Ashley Mostyn, who will be the right fielder. So Katie Hopkins will take a seat. Through five innings, she gave up five runs that were earned. What a play by the Lord. She's an infielder. She backhanded that, took a hit away from Nowicki. Solid shot by Nowicki. Marina DiBiasso. Marina DiBiasso has doubled, tripled, and singled. She's knocked in two and scored two. So she's been involved in four of the five runs. Hits it to right. In for another base hit. She's going to keep going. She gets her second triple. Boy, she's been hitting the ball. She had a big night last night, too. So that play by Lord taking a hit away from the wiki is big. Talia Small, a ground to the third. Doubled in a run in the second, walked and scored in the fifth. Top three hitters have done all the damage for St. Mary's. High for a ball. They had that opportunity, nine to five, bases loaded, one out, and Hopkins got out of the inning with a strikeout and a pop-up. Hit foul out of play. Down and in, nice stop by the catcher, Fraser. Still hard to believe she's an eighth grader. Hit the third. They throw it away at first base. The run will score. Third error for Swampscott coming in the last two innings. It's now nine to six. Jordan Sullivan has flied the center field twice, reached on an error when her fly ball in left field was dropped. And I think we're getting a runner for Smaller at first base. Abby Fowler will run at first. Abby's father, Timmy, is the assistant coach and pitching coach for the boys' baseball team. Line to right field for a base hit. That's probably going to score a run. They're sending a home, another extra base hit. A triple by Sullivan.
All of a sudden, it's nine to seven with a runner at third. Jenny Udis bounced to second, bounced to the mound. Got an RBI when she hit a ground ball off the pitcher's glove, got thrown out by the second baseman. Big run at third. And we're going to get a runner at third for Sullivan. And we're going to get warm up action for Swamp Scott. Elijah Brown again running for Sullivan. And again, they put that rule in a few years ago to speed up the game. The pitcher and the catcher can be run for as many times as they get on base. No penalty to either the pitcher, catcher, or the runner. Hit back to the mound. The run scores. They didn't hold the runner at third. Samantha Porozinski grounded out to the pitcher at the shortstop and walked. In for a strike. Samantha's all the way back from a 9 nothing deficit to make it 9 to 8. Hit to right field. It drops in for a base hit. Alyssa Grossi, she singled, bounced to third, reached on an error. Nice stop by the catcher, Fraser, that keeps the runner at first. The big play was the hit right back to the mound. They didn't even look at the runner at third. The runner just scored. One one the count. Hit the shot. They make the force at second. So Samir is trying to come all the way back. We're moving to the bottom half of the sixth. It's now nine to eight in favor of Swamp Scott. And you think back when they had, Samiris had the bases loaded and only one out. And Hopkins retired two in a row without bringing the run home. They got three hits. There was another big time error. And now it's a nail biter. Newhall has been tough on the mound. She gave up one out triple in the second. And that was big because that Brought in the ninth run on a ground ball. And that's the difference in the game right now. She gave up a two out single in the fifth. In between she retired ten in a row. She kept St. Mary's in it. They kept battling. Top of the order for Swampscott. 
Crestman has walked twice and scored twice. That was in the first inning. She hit it on the nose, but she lined it right to the second baseman. Squid like she's going to bunt, took the pitch low for a ball. They throw it away. She beat it anyway. It's a base hit. Good backup by D'Alessandro. That could have been trouble if that got thrown into right, deep right field. Mia Hopkins reached an error, walked and scored a run in the first inning. Called on on strikes against Newhall, her one trip. Let's see if they bunt here. They get it down. Newhall makes the play. Cresta took a real wide turn. If they threw the ball behind her, they might have got her out. So runner at second, Katie Watts. Doubled in a run and scored. Singled, and she's got another single, and that's going to be a big run. And they throw the ball way up off the backstop. And she winds up at third. That's a big hit. I guess the Swamps get fans back into it. Chloe Rokoskis hit a sacrifice fly, popped up to third. That was all in the first inning. Bounced to first base. So Watts comes up with her second RBI, a big hit. After Cresta shot, bunted, and he had Cresta. If they threw it, they threw it to third. If they threw it to second, they would have had Cresta picked off at second base. She took a real wide turn. That one goes to the backstop, and the runner's going to score. So that comeback. Swamps get answers that right back in the bottom of the sixth. It's now back to a three run cushion with these two runs. So a hit, a sacrifice, a hit, and an error. The throw from the outfield on that base hit. They almost hit the backstop on the fly. It floated way off. And allowed Watts to go all the way to third. And she just scored on the wild pitch. In for a strike. Waved at that pitch, it was way down in the way. She had an extra bat to reach that one. And that's ball four. They couldn't get the new hall in her Four innings of work, but the bunt single started, the sacrifice, then the base hit, throw in the error, now a base on balls, and now another wild pitch. So the Swampskit fans had quieted down when Severus had the inning to get to winning nine to eight. Now they've come alive 
with Swampscott scoring two and having a runner at second with one out here in the bottom of the sixth. Grossi had it and dropped it. She was right there and couldn't hold on. And that's another error. Two errors in the inning, three for the game for St. Mary's. Ashley Marston is the hitter. She went into play right field when they had a pitching change. Off the fist toward the St. Mary's dugout foul. Off the fist again, that was way up and in. Almost like she was protecting herself, swinging at that one. She's one of the older Big Blue, she's a junior. Nice stop by Sullivan. So they hadn't scored since the second inning. Now they put two more on the board here in the sixth after St. Mary's had climbed back to within nine to eight. Slaps it the other way, foul. They throw her out, but it'll be another run. Sarah Ryan walked and scored in the first, bounced out the second, got an RBI in the second, and bounced to second in the fifth. So she's 0 for 2 with an RBI and a run scored. Swampscott saw St. Mary's climb within a run and they put three on the board to push it back to a four-run cushion. I think if you told Swampscott they're going to score 12, they'd say it's going to be a fairly easy win with 12. If you told St. Mary's they're going to get eight, they'd say we're going to be in pretty good shape. But they're not. A shot into right center field. Sarah Ryan ripped that one. So they, that little rally and that momentum that St. Mary's got has been taken away big time by Swampscott here in the sixth inning. St. Mary's made a couple of errors in this inning that hurt them. 
there's been a walk that's come around the score. High for a ball. Frazier is the eighth hitter in the inning. Line to the first baseman. That was going to be a base hit. The young eighth grader drilled that one and smaller one up and picked it. But that momentum quickly taken away by Swampskit. They put four on the board, so that one run cushion that they had that St. Mary's had battled back to get to is now a five run deficit. 13 to 8. St. Mary's last shot in the seventh inning. They need a, a very big inning as they trail Swampska 13 to 8. Lily Newhall has walked and struck out twice. Fishing Riley Lord, who's starting her second inning of work. Six walks given up by St. Mary's and five of them have scored. Pop foul back and out of play. Eight, nine, and one here to start the last inning. That one bounces. High for a ball. In for a strike, and the count goes full three and two. The payoff pitch up and coming, and that's ball four. Newhall draws a walk. The bunt is down. She beats it and they throw it away. It's a big hit. So don't go away. Number nine, Christina Nguyen. Yeah, 
Oh. Safe, she beat it. Nowicki gets an infield hit. A run scores. One more gets on, they'll bring the tying run to home plate. D.B. Oslo is perfect. She can hit a home run, she'd hit for the cycle. She had double, triple, triple, and single. Two triples, a double, and a single. Scored three and knocked in two. Down and in for a ball. St. Barry's trying to come all the way back again. Down and away for a ball. Taylor Small to the first baseman on deck. They just got her at third base. Had a small, a ground out to third, doubled in a run, walked and scored, reached on error and scored. Trying to get on base to bring the tying run up to the plate. Hit the shot. They throw it away. The tang run at home plate. And that brings a trip out to the mound. Jordan Sullivan. She tripled her last time up for an RBI. Wouldn't she like to do that again? Sullivan flied the center twice, hit a fly ball to the left that was dropped and she reached. Last time up she tripled. Runners aren't going anywhere, they need more than one run. She chased that pitch, she's a little bit anxious I think, chased that pitch and was down in the dirt. Boy, a base hit here would really make things interesting. See, Mears went nine runs and they're trailing by four in the seventh inning. And this isn't slow pitch, this is fast pitch. Nice stop by the catcher, Fraser. Hit pass, third base foul. One, two, the count. With Jenny Udis, Udis, excuse me, on deck. Nice. 
Hi, football. Hit way up in the air, center field. Preston makes the play. They tag up and score, the runners will move up. The runners move up to second and third, the run scores. Jenny Udis represents the tying run, hits it foul over the fence behind first base. Ten runs on the board by St. Mary's and they're down three. Tying run at home plate. Hit in the center field for a base hit. Safe at the plate. They call her out at second base. Trying to get it to second base. They put three on the board. He put four on the board. Three more hits. A big error. Swampskit will pick up their sixth Pollen championship, and he did it in a nail biter. More like slow pitch softball. 13 to 12. The runner thrown out at second base was a tying run, and it was a bang bang play at second base. Swampskit batted around 13 hitters in the first inning. They got eight runs. A big run in the second, a triple by the starting pitcher Hopkins with a ground ball by Ryan, knocked in the run to make it nine. St. Mary's closed within nine to eight. And that big sixth inning, four runs put up by Swampskit after St. Mary's closed to nine to eight. They put four on the board, looked like they were coasting at 13 to eight. St. Mary's comes back and puts four of their own in the seventh, closing within a run, and it winds up 13 to 12. Swampskit will win their sixth Holland tournament, and that's a big loss for St. Mary's because that's now they're going to be 11 and seven, and that probably clinches the fact that they won't get a home game. For Swampskit, Cresta had two walks, a, a hit, scored three times. Mia Hopkins was on base twice, scored a run. Watts had a double, a single, a single. She knocked in two, scored two. Rakoskis had a walk, a sacrifice fly. She scored one, knocked in one. Riley Lord got a base hit, reached on the field his choice, scored two, knocked in one. Kaylee Hopkins had a triple, a single, scored twice. And Marston hitting her spot, got an RBI uh, on, a four, on a hit back to the pitcher with knocking a runner in from third. Sarah Ryan had a walk and a double, knocked in a run and scored a run. Nicolette Fra Fraser, the young eighth grader, had a hit. She had a walk that, with the bases loaded, getting an RBI and scored a run. And then on the other side, Christina Nowicki was on base three times, three hits. I hit Batsman. She scored three. Marina DiBiasso was on base five times. A double 
two triples, a single, reached on the field his choice, scored four, knocked in two. Taylor Smaller had a double, a walk, reached on an error, reached on an error, scored three, knocked in a run. Jordan Sullivan reached on an error, had a triple, a sacrifice fly. She knocked in two and scored one. Jenny uh, U Udice, uh, Udice had two RBIs. She got a base hit. Sam Porozinski had a base hit and a walk. Lily Newhall drew a walk and scored a run. Felicia D'Alessandro had a base hit. There were base hits. Plays all over the place. It winds up with the runner being thrown out at second base for the third out on a bang-bang play. And it was a tying run. As Swampscott holds on, they build up a big lead. And they hold off the comeback twice by St. Mary's. And Swampscott ekes out a 13-12 win. They win their fifth Holland tournament. And we're waiting for Jeff Rip and Dave Raymond, who did a terrific job running this tournament. They are down at home plate, and we'll try to zoom in on them behind home plate at the table where they have the hardware. They'll be giving out awards to MVP, All-Stars, and again, a tip of the hat to Jeff Rupp, the president of Babe Ruth, Dave Raymond who officially retired last year, and now he's back. And again, the Babe Ruth people, what a tremendous job they do. They keep this field looking good, and, we, and everybody knows it. when it rains, it goes underwater. And they do a great job getting it ready for the high school teams during the year. They run all those great programs for the young kids during the season baseball. They run the, ba the Babe Ruth tournaments, state tournaments. They ran New England last year. And they do all of this for zero. They don't get paid a nickel. And they miss Mr. Bellavo, who was a tremendous president of this league for a while, taking over John Cassian, who also did a great job. Mr. Bellavo retired, and they miss him. He was outstanding. So they're going to announce the awards. There'll be All-Stars, MVP, scholarships, and uh, I, I got to mention again the Babe Ruth program because they, the Holland family, did a tremendous job running this tournament for 18 years, 19, 20 years actually, I believe. I think it was the second year, or, or 19 years at least. I think this might be the third year. It was going to go, it was going to evaporate. It was going to shut down. Babe Ruth said, "We'll take it over." Paige Licata and her team will accept the runner-up trophy. So Babe Ruth stepped in and said, we'll run the program. First year, they didn't give out scholarships because they didn't have any money. They went out, they got an ad book. One person, I wish I knew who it was, one person sold all the ads in the book. They raised the money, and they're now giving out the scholarships again. So another... Great job done as Swampskit comes up and accepts the championship trophy. Captains and coach. They can't get the microphone to work. And they better hurry up because the rain has come back. They had it and they lost it. Hello? There we go. 
Certainly works now. Congratulations, Swamp Scott. Coach Gary Moran. Sixth Holland Championship for Swamp Scott. And he eked out a 13 to 12 win. Ron Holland Tournament Champion, Swamp Scott Big Blue. So now the awards will be given out. We would now like to present our all tournament team, starting with Lynn English, Tommy Hill, and Grace Gately. Tommy Hill and Grace Gately on here. They got their awards a little bit earlier. Maybe they are. They did stay. Very good. Lynn English. I'm glad they did that. They were taking pictures before, so I thought they might have left. Megan Levitt and John Acalda. Megan Levitt and John Acalda from Lynn Classical. Terrific young ladies. I know them all. Angelia Pepe and Jordan Sullivan. From Swan Scott, Leo Hopkins and Katie Watts. Katie Watts and Mia Hopkins. For the first time. I think we have co MVPs. For the first time in the history of this tournament, they're giving us Sportsmanship Award, and that goes to Lynn Classical's Tory Adams. Tory Adams gets Sportsmanship Award. If they don't give Marina DiBiaso something. And our 2018 MVP from Swamp Sidney Cresta. Sidney Cresta is the MVP. I can't believe they left out. They didn't get DiBiaso out the entire tournament. In this game, she had two triples, a double, a single. She scored four and knocked in four. I don't know how that happened. That's a miscarriage of justice, I'm sorry. Pepe deserved it. She struck out 15 in the game last night. But I don't know how they left Marina DiBiaso out. The scholarship winners will be announced. Our first winner is from Lynn English. Four year starter, honor roll student, grade A, also played basketball, Tommy Hill. Tommy Hill, a scholarship winner, congratulations. I missed the number so I don't I can't make out who it was. I thought it said Riley Lord. I hope that's correct. Uh, 
They only give out three scholarships here. St. Mary doesn't have a senior. This is going to be Megan Levitt, I believe. Megan Levitt from Link Classical. And again, St. Mary's is not getting one because they don't have a senior. So the only three scholarship winners this year. So a, a, a big tip of the hat, again, to Jeff Rupp, Dave Raymond, their crew at, at Babe Ruth. They did a tremendous job picking up this tournament, running it this weekend, and they did a great job. And we beat the rain because the rain drop is starting to come down a little bit heavy now. But congratulations to the Swamps get their sixth Holland Championship. And good luck to St. Mary's where they'll be moving on into the state tournament. So 13 to 12, the final score, Swamps get over St. Mary's. We hope you enjoyed it. I'm John Hoffman saying we'll see you next time.